Okay, so let's take a look at uh, section 8.1. This is the uh, intro section on probability, but it's going to use all of the stuff from chapter 7, the 7.3 and the 7.4, multiplication principle and permutations and combinations. And because of that, these problems are going to be very difficult. The only idea from probability that we have in here, uh, properties that we have, is um, we talk about the, the sample space and the number of events. Okay, so we have, since this first element has a subscript one and the last one has a subscript n, there are n objects in the group. And here's the first big prob um, probability. Uh, anytime you calculate a probability, it's in particularly important in this section because it's very easy to do a combination and put a combination on the top and a combination on the bottom uh, or a, a couple of use the multiplication principle a couple of times and end up with a number on the top that's larger than the number on the bottom, and that can't be. So this says that when you calculate a probability, every probability has to be a number between zero and one. It's on a continuum. So make sure that if the question says, what is the probability that you do get a number between zero and one? So you can have a fraction where the numerator is less than the denominator, the top number is smaller, or you can have a decimal number that's less than 1.000. Uh, the other thing that they have is that if you take, this is just like, um, well, I'm not sure, I don't think we've done something like this before, but if you take uh, the sum of all the probabilities, it has to equal one in a simple experiment. So here are two properties of uh, probabilities that uh, might come back. But here's the basic, um, definition of a probability. I will, uh, this is the empirical one that maybe we'll get to later uh, once we get to some problems like this, but I don't think you see you have any empirical probabilities in section 8.1, but they do define it here. The one that we're mostly going to use is this one down here. If your outcomes are uh, equally likely to occur, then here's our definition of a probability. The probability that event E occurs, just take the number of ways that E can occur, uh, can occur and divide that by the total number of possible outcomes. If you're looking at a card example, then you're drawing, uh, you're being dealt a five card hand and you wanna know what's the probability of getting exactly four kings in that hand, then the bottom number is the total number of possible hands. The top number is going to be a subset of the total number of possible hands, but the top number is going to be the number of ways we can get three kings and one non-king. So it's, it's a simple fraction, but sometimes the number of ways these two things can happen are quite difficult. So I want to spend the rest of the time going through problems that use this very, very basic, very, very simple formula for probability. By the way, here's an example. Um, what's the probability of uh, flipping a head with one coin toss, All right? I'm pretty certain that you've done things like this before in your past. Um, okay, so when you flip one coin, uh, the sample space is heads or tails. The number of outcomes in the sample space is two. Flipping a head, well, when you flip a coin, you have two outcomes, head or tail. Which one is flipping a head? Well, there's just the head. That's how we would list flipping a head with one coin toss, just H, all right? So then to calculate the probability of flipping a head, we would take the number of ways that we could get, could get a head and divide by the total number of possible outcomes. And that's where we get the probability of flipping a head is one half. Top number is always smaller than the bottom number could possibly be equal, but usually not. So it's just, this is, I know this is a simple example and none of your examples are gonna be simple, but um, let's go back to the card game because it's probably fresh in your mind. Uh, refer to the standard 52 card deck. And this experiment consists of dealing five cards. And so we're gonna select five cards from a standard 52 card deck. What is the probability of being dealt so you can think of a, when you're being dealt a card, it's just a, a, you know, a randomly selected five card hand, five black cards. All right, so the number of 
by card hands. We know that in cards, there are, we, we play cards with a 52 card deck. Order doesn't matter. All of the cards are distinct and we wanna choose five of them. So the denominator of all of these probabilities then, 35, 36, 37, and 38, the bottom number would be the total number of possible hands. And the total number of possible hands is the, is the 52 choose five. Now, to answer the questions, what they're talking about in 35, 36, 37, and 38, they're talking about the number of hands of a specific kind, not all the possible number of hands. So five black cards, here's what we would have to do. The top number, well, we first have to, we're gonna choose five cards, but we're gonna choose them from the black cards. We're not gonna choose them from all cards. So we have 26, choose five, and then we're gonna take and divide 52, choose five. The denominator is always gonna be the 52 choose five because that's the total number of possible hands. Now, you're gonna evaluate this with your calculator and you know, then write a decimal number to determine what your chances are of getting five black cards. Uh, five hearts. Well, if you wanna know the number of ways to get five hearts, you have to choose from the hearts. So there are 13 hearts and you wanna choose five. And then again, 52 choose five in the denominator. Okay, there are 12 face cards, cards with faces, the jacks, the king, queens, the kings, three of each of the four suits, there are 12 face cards. So if we want to figure out what are the, what's the probability of, of selecting a hand with all five face cards, we have to choose from the 12 face cards. So from the 12 face cards, let's choose five and the total number of possible hands we could have is 52 choose five. And there are 40 non-face cards. Since there are 40 face cards, or 12 face cards, there are 49 face cards, 12 face cards, 52 total. So this one would be of the 40 non-face cards, we choose five. And then the total number of possible hands again. All right. So this one here that you uh, calculated, it had a 22% chance of happening in your project. Uh, you can see this one here involves being dealt uh, a five card hand. This one here, the 39 choose five, you need to choose your cards from, you know, what's the probability of not getting a seven, uh, a, a spade, let's say. Well, you have to choose from the non-spade, five cards. You go into a formal event somewhere, they take your coat, they give you a piece of paper, six people check their coats, and they all want their own coat back. All right, so in this context, let me go further. Um, is it sufficient to um, just select the six coats? Or does the arrangement matter? That is, do you want to select them and then order them so that everybody gets their own coat? Yeah, so order does matter here uh, because you can't just select you know, the six, um, the coats, and then what do you do with them? You have to arrange them. All right, so the bottom number is six permute six. That's the total number of ways that you could arrange those six coats. And I don't know if you've made this connection, but uh, if you have N, NPN like this, you need to permute all of them. And that's just n factorial. So this one's going to be six factorial down in there. <clears throat> so there's a huge number of possible ways that you could order those coats. Let's say your six individuals are waiting in line, and you're just going to choose the six and just kind of throw one out to them. But no, you want them to get their right coat. So you have to match the first one, and you have to match the second one, and you have to match the third one and the fourth one, and the fifth one, and the sixth one. So you have to get it right on every single choice. And only one of the permutations will do that out of all of these possible permutations. So there's only one in 720 chance that everybody would get their right code. Okay, I don't wanna make it sound like every probability you do will involve permutations and combinations. It's just that I think it's uh, useful to spend time doing those in class because those are the hardest. Let me switch over to one that's not so hard like this one. An experiment consists of rolling two fair dice. 
okay, the, the normal dice that we think of, a cube, each outcome equally likely. And when we, when we roll two dice, we usually add the dots on top, assuming that each simple event is as e equally likely that as any other, like getting a 1-1 one, one is just as uh, likely as getting a 3-4. You know, three, three on the first die, four on the second. Find the probability that some of the dots indicated would be all of these. Okay, whenever you're doing a two, di a, a two dice problem, just write down all the possible outcomes. So you've got the first die here, and then the second one here. Now you might not be able to distinguish the two dice together. Maybe they're both red dice with white dots and you can't distinguish them. But that doesn't mean that the two um, outcomes shouldn't be counted. So we have one, two, three, four, five, and six as your first die and the second die can equally be one of those six numbers. And so the body of the table here you're going to have six times six or 36 equally likely outcomes. And I put the plus sign here because we're going to add the two dice. So the smallest roll is a one plus one, which is a two. And then four, five, six, seven, add two to one, get three, two to two, four, and so on. So it takes a little bit of time to actually write this out. But once you write out this grid, you're going to see all 36 possible outcomes. And so 36 is going to be the bottom number on all of these problems. I mean, not always. They can ask them in a slightly different way, and, and 36 might not be the total. But of those 36 outcomes, how many of them will create a sum greater than 8, and so on. So let me finish this table, and then we'll go through. And 6, 6, 12 is the highest outcome. So 36 equally likely outcomes. All right, so then to do a problem like this, a sum is greater than eight, we just have to go count the number of these 36 outcomes where you see that the sum is greater than eight. Now, greater than eight does not mean equal to eight. So we're gonna start counting up the nines, the tens, the elevens, and the twelves because you know, we don't have to count the thirteens because there are none. So count the nines, one, two, three, four, count the tens, five, six, seven, count the eleven, eight, nine, and then count the twelve. 10. So there are 10 different outcomes. And usually in problems like this, we just leave it in reduced fraction form. And you can reduce it in your head or just reduce it in your calculator. 518. Convert to a fraction is in the math menu. Sum is 13. There are no 13. Zero. Sum is 2, 3, or 12. And dice at the casino. If you're up and you roll a two or a three or a 12, everybody at the table hates you because they all lose their money. It's called craps. So we have a 12, there's one of them there, one, two, and two threes. So there are four outcomes that are either twos, threes, or, or 12s. So there's a one in nine chance that you'll lose in, in craps. Get the idea? Not two, not four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So nine of the rolls are either a two or four or a six. You subtract 36 from that, that means 27 are not those. And that one reduces to three fourths. Sum is divisible by four. Well, that would include fours and eights and twelves. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Again, a nine, four. One fourth of numbers are divisible by four. Divisible by two and three. Two and three are relatively prime, so therefore, you're looking for all numbers that are divisible by six. The sixes, five of them, and the 12. Six total. But again, I just keep referring to these and just counting up the number that meets the, the description over here of the event. So these are the events, and these, this is the sample space. Uh, when you have these examples where they're um, this next grouping, again, this is not uh, using perms and combos, right? But uh, we have an experiment here, tossing three fair coins except that one of the three coins has a head on both sides. Compute the probability of obtaining the indicated results. So um, there are only eight outcomes here uh, because we have two outcomes on the first coin, two outcomes on the second coin, and two outcomes on the third coin. And two times two times two is eight. So this one is such that we can actually write down the eight possible outcomes. So here they are. Uh, head, 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 the other head. Okay, I'll just 
head one and head two, because that last coin there has a head on both sides. Or we could have head, tail, head one, or head, tail, head two, or we could have tail, head, head one, or tail, head, head two, or tail, tail, head one, tail, tail, head two. All right, I just put the subscripts there just because you could identify when we're actually counting these up, you know, these are both the same thing, THT, THT. But that third coin is heads on both sides. So, but that's the sample space. So, and if you can identify the sample space and then the number in the sample space is equal to eight, then that usually is the number, the bottom number that you use when you're calculating a probability. Okay, so let's go with one head. So let's go over here and count all the outcomes that have exactly one head. Three heads, three heads, two heads, two heads, two heads, two heads, one head, one head. So there are two of them here out of the eight. So there's a one in four chance or one probability of one four that you would get exact, exactly one head. Um, three heads, just those two outcomes there out of the eight. More than one head, well, every outcome. No, this says more than one head. So that means two or three, right? Yeah. So we don't want to count those, but more than one head, 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 more than one head. There's six outcomes that have more than one head. Out of the eight, the idea. No heads, not a single outcome is like that. At least I mean, all of these eight outcomes has at least one head. More than one tail, that would be just these two. Two heads, I'll, I'll interpret that to mean exactly two heads. One, two, three, four. Half the time. All right, let's take a look at the um, some more card examples. Notice they're changing the number of cards that you select. Six card hand, four card hand, seven card hand, five card hand, something like this. Uh, so maybe I'll do the evens. All right, so there's two different w numbers that you have to count. You have to count the total number of possible hands. Well, in a five card hand, that's equal to 52 choose five. So you've seen this before. And it consists entirely of face cards. How many different hands consist of entirely of face cards? Well, we need a five card hand. So from the 12 face cards, we need to choose five. That's it. You just calculate it from here. Um, 82, a six card hand this time. So now instead of 52 choose five is the, the total number of possible hands we have. The bottom number to this one is going to be 52 choose six. We're going to choose six distinct cards without any interest in the nature of those six cards. We just know that we're selected, we're being dealt six cards. Okay, now it contains exactly two clubs. Now, a lot of these problems are difficult because you know that you have to have a six card hand. So when you're creating your six card hand and counting the number of ways to get a six card hand, you have to make sure that you select six cards. Okay, this one says contains exactly two clubs. So for this one, we're gonna apply the multiplication principle. We're first gonna count up the number of ways that you can select two clubs. Then we're gonna select the number of ways you can select the four other cards, the four non-clubs. You don't want to select the, the four other cards from clubs, then you could possibly have more than two clubs in the hand. And here it says exactly two clubs. So from the 13 clubs, we're going to select two. And that tells us 13 choose two is the number of ways, number of ways that we can select those, those two clubs. But now we have to select the, the remaining cards in our hand. And since we've only selected two clubs, we need four non-clubs. So we're gonna choose four. This two and this four make up the six cards that we're choosing. But since we want only two, exactly two clubs, we have to select these last four cards from the non-clubs. There are 39 such cards. All the hearts, all the diamonds, all the spades, 13 of each. So we have two different operations or two choices here. Choose the choose the clubs and choose the non-clubs. 
When we're done, we have to choose six cards total. 84, a four card hand that contains no space cards. Okay, so 52, choose four. That's the total number of hands. Notice up here, choose five, choose six, choose four now because it's a four card hand. And we're gonna choose no face cards. Okay, so we know that in a deck there are 12 face cards and there are 40 then non-face cards. So from the 40 non-face cards, we're gonna choose all four of our cards. And 86, uh, this time, we're going to select seven cards. So the bottom number, the total number of possible hands that we can come up with, 52 choose seven. Now the top number deals with the nature of the hand they're interested in, this event. So the card that we're interested in contains exactly one king and exactly two jacks. All right, so we're gonna select the kings, one. Then we're gonna select the jacks, and we want two. And then we want the, that makes up three of the cards. So then we wanna select the last four cards. And there's no requirement on what those last four cards would be, except since they said exactly one king and exactly two jacks, we don't want to include um, any jacks and kings in this last four cards. So three choices from the four kings, we want to choose one. After we've made that choice, then from the four jacks, we want to choose two of them. It's another independent choice, all right? And then finally, all right, so that gives us three cards in our hand. Finally, we want to choose the last four cards from all the cards that are remaining. We don't want to include jacks. We don't want to include kings. So we want to take those eight cards out of the deck. So that means that there are 44 other cards remaining that we can choose from. 52 minus the 44. So there are four kings, there are four jacks, and there are 44 non-king jacks. Okay, I will uh, work through some more of these and then put the notes um, up online so you can see how some of these other ones uh, work out. And again, the ones with permutations and combinations, those are the more difficult ones. So.